Well, hello good people, I'm Dmitry and the new 9th gen CPUs from Intel, the Coffee Lake Refresh is finally here for the mobile, so all the notebooks are going to be getting a nice little speed bump in terms of frequency, and so if you've been wanting to pick up uh, a notebook right now, should you wait potentially for the 9th gen rollout, I would suggest yes, but in this video we'll be discussing all the things that are new in terms of clocks and some, some feature stuff that are pretty exciting and also a little bit underwhelming, so stick around, let's talk about all that right after this. For our Canadian audience, Memory Express is your place for all types of electronics and hardware goodies with fantastic prices, great customer service and uber price guarantee. With stores in BC, Alberta, Manitoba and the new Saskatoon location, everything is linked below, thank you very much. So understanding what this 9th generation Coffee Lake refresh processor lineup for the notebook space means, we first have to rewind. So the first generation of Coffee Lake mobile processors carry the 8000 series name, were based on the 14NM manufacturing process and were released last year. And don't confuse those with Whiskey Lake or Ambry Lake, which are bo also based on the Coffee Lake architecture, but are a lot more power efficient and really targeted towards the lower, more power efficient ultrabooks and such. And then there was the second generation of of Coffee Lake CPUs for the desktop first under the 9000 series name like the 9900K and so that is the product that is being moved into the mobile space for mainstream and gaming notebooks. Now don't confuse this with Intel's Ice Lake which has been rumored and stuff so that's coming out in sometime in Q4 and that is based on the 10 nanometer manufacturing process instead of the 14 and so the Ice Lake is going to be Intel's 10th generation you know architecture and processor lineup uh, but until then, we're stuck with the 9th generation on the mobile side. And so with this 9th gen arrival to the notebook space, there are a few interesting new things like the Wi-Fi 6 module, so not necessarily for faster speeds, because right now the speeds are fantastic, but for reduced latency and like allowing for simultaneous connections to the machine. Uh, the new Intel Optane H10 support, so uh, make sure to check out that video right over here. And also, this is an interesting one, 128 gigabyte of DDR4 support on the notebook side of things, which is kind of interesting and kind of insane at the same time. And now let's get into the processors and this is something that Intel obviously wants to really put out there as the most extreme and powerful noble processor, the i9-9980HK. So 8 cores, 16 threads, 5 Gs for tuber boost clocks and it's also unlocked so you can go in and overclock that thing. Obviously it's for really thick notebooks, I guess a particular niche that wants something that powerful that is still somewhat mobile, but obviously is like a desktop replacement machine. Then there's also the i9-9980H, so it is locked, but they're almost saying it's for thin and light notebooks, but as we've seen in the past for i9 machines, that cooling is normally uh, not sufficient and you have throttling and therefore worse performance than what you should expect from the part. Now, of course, these percentage and improvements and performance are all attractive until you look at the footnotes to discover what they're comparing this unlocked 9980HK processor to. So they are comparing it to the i9-8950HK. It's also unlocked, but it's only a six core 12 thread part instead of the eight core 16 thread part. So obviously, you know, the much faster performance and all that uh, comes with additional cores on the 9980HK. And so here's the full stack for the 9th gen mobile side of things, the i5-9300H, all the way up to the i9-9900HK. So 4 core, 8 threads, all the way up to 8 core, 16 threads. They all support the Intel Optane Memory H10 modules, which is nice. They all still have the same integrated graphics, the UHD 630. We we're kind of hoping for a little bit of an upgrade there, but I'm guessing the desktop side of things still has the UHD 630, so why would they upgrade that for the mobile side of things? As you can see, the i7-9850 is partially unlocked which means you can overclock the memory and I think you have like some headroom for overclocking the CPU frequency but like it's locked at some point but I'm really excited to see the performance of uh, the 9750H because the 8750H the previous generation is found in so many notebooks it almost seems like it's like the mainstream gaming processor and that is a 2.2 to 4.1 gigahertz part whereas the the new 9750H is a 2.6 to 4.5 gigahertz so much higher base clock and nice boost in performance too for that tuber frequency to 4.5 which is fantastic and it's still a 45 tdp part but my concern is that notebook manufacturers right now 
are not able to cool the CPUs efficiently to maintain that consistent clock speeds for the boost. Like this Razer Blade 15, it's super thin and the 8750H in here boosts to 2.8 gigahertz while in the gaming load. And so, I mean, imagine having 9750H in here, which is supposed to boost up to 4.5. There's no way. As for the availability of notebooks with 9 gen CPUs, we're told it's right after launch, which is a good thing. And from what we understand, it's a simple drop and upgrade from 8 gen uh, to get your new CPUs rolling. Uh, like the Gigabyte Air 15X will have the same chassis, everything identical, but a new CPU. And also as a filler, Intel is announcing new desktop 9 gen CPUs, most of which are locked. So better for system integrators who are not allowing that overclock to happen. But there is one interesting CPU in here, the i3 9350K. So it is unlocked, four core, four thread, four gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz. That sounds like a really nice little gaming package for under $200. Of course, when compared value-wise against the AMD side of things, uh, it doesn't really pop, but against Intel's own stack and the i3 department, it doesn't look that bad. And so this rollout of 9 gen into the mobile space is definitely welcome. You get a nice frequency boost across the entire SKU versus the 8 gen. Uh, and now we have the i9 craziness that is happening, the 9980HK and the H CPUs, which I would say like they're not for thin and light stuff, obviously. They're for the muscle books, the really thick things that stay in your desk and replace your desktop. Uh, but it's kind of cool to have that as on the unlocked front, because most likely it will be crazy expensive, but um, I mean, it still allows for a little bit of experimentation. I'm really excited about the 9850H and the 9750H, because the clocks on that to 4.5 and 4.6 sound pretty fantastic uh, on a six core 12 thread CPU uh, and in a thin and light notebook. I mean, if all goes well, if cooling is sufficient, then we're gonna have ourselves a nice little power house in our backpack. And if you're on the fence of getting a new notebook, definitely be slightly more patient just to see what the prices are like for the 9th gen SKUs. Uh, and as with new product launch, of course, the discounts will happen for the 8th gen side, uh, which might be a good time to pick up a slightly older, but still very capable notebook then. I know Eber is getting the Air 15X 9th gen version, so definitely stick around to see what the performance difference is like, and if we actually hit those uh, tuber boost clocks. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.